the Daily Visual Bible. I'm the avatar version of Robbie Yates and I would like to welcome you to my home in Second Life. Let me show you around. This area was designed to be a place for people to come and reflect on the Word of God. This is the building in which we keep the television that broadcasts a show that you may be familiar with. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Daily Visual Bible Land here in Second Life. Please feel free to come and visit us on the 31st of August as we host our first discussion on the book of Genesis. Now let's do the right thing and open God's word of prayer. Lord, I ask that as I read your word, you reveal something new to me. I also ask that as people see and hear your word, they will come to a better understanding of you. Amen. Genesis chapter 44 He commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the man's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the sack's mouth. Put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, for his grain money. He did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and the donkeys. When they had gone out of the city, and were not yet far off, who said to his steward, Up, follow after the man. When you overtake them, ask them, Why have you rewarded kindness with evil? Isn't this that from which my lord drinks, and by which he earned these divines? You have done evil in so doing. He overtook them, and spoke these words to them. They said to him, why does my lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. See the money which we found in our sacks' mouths, we brought again to you out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal silver or gold out of your lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, let him die. We also will be my lord's slaves. He said, No, then, unless it be as you say. He with whom it is found will be my slave, and you will be blameless. Then they hurried, and each man took his sack down to the ground, and each man opened his sack. He searched, beginning with the oldest, and ending with the youngest. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes, and each man loaded his donkey, and returned to the city. Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there. He fell on the ground before him. Joseph said to him, What a deed is this that you have done? Don't you know that such a man as I can indeed divine? Judah said, What will we tell my lord? What will we speak? Or how will we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Behold, we are my lord's slaves, both we and he also in whose hand the cup is found. He said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup is found, he will be my slave. That's for you. Go up in peace to your father. And Judah came near to him and said, Oh my lord, please let your servant speak a word in my lord's ears. And don't let your anger burn against your servant. For you are even as Pharaoh. My lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? We said to my lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loves him. You said to your servants, Bring him now to me, that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my lord, The boy can't leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will see my face no more. When we came up to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my lord. Our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. We said, We can't go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down. 
we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. And one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. And I haven't seen them since. If you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my grey hairs with sorrow unto my death. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, since his life is bound up in the boy's life, it will happen when he sees that the boy is no more, that he will die. Your servants will bring down the grey hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to death. For your servant became collateral for the boy to my father, saying, If I don't bring him to you, then I will bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore, please, let your servant stay instead of the boy, my lord's slave, and let the boy go up with his brothers. But how will I go up to my father, if the boy isn't with me? Unless I see the evil that will come on my father.